how to make a lightsaber blade uh, one color always, no matter what. Um, to consider this, uh, we first have to look at the blade controller here. We have three transistors down here. These are N-channel MOSFETs. These control which color the blade ignites as. These four transistors up here control the different uh, segments or banks of, of LEDs in the blade. So these are the three color transistors. And really, if you want one color to always be on, all you have to do is basically remove the transistor and connect whatever line it's on to ground. So for an example, let's make this blade all red. So I need to take the red resistor, which is right here. That's your green resistor and uh, transistor, and that's your blue transistor. Just need to take the uh, red transistor and connect its uh, drain to source. And what do I mean by that? Well, here is what one of those transistors looks like. You have the body of it here, okay, and then it's got three pins attached to it, like so. We have the drain, which is electricity comes into the drain, and then we have source, which connects connects to ground. Now, a little triangle is the symbol for ground. And this is the gate. This sort of controls when this switch, when this transistor connects the drain and the source together. If there's power coming into it, then the switch is thrown, the, the connection is made, and power will flow from drain to source. If you remove the gate, uh, power from the gate, this turns off, no electricity flows. So one option would be to just put power on the gate pin the whole time. There's actually a 3.3 uh, a volt uh, test pad right there. You could run a wire from there to the gate of whatever transistor you want, and that transistor will always be on. The problem is this line that the the on the gate here runs off directly to the microcontroller of the blade. And if you put power on here, and if the microcontroller to turn the gate off is connecting the gate to ground internally, then you're going to have a short between power and ground going through the microcontroller. All that current is going to get uh generate a lot of heat in the microcontroller and the microcontroller is going to burn up. It's it's a bad thing. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to stay away from the gate. Um, instead, uh, what we're going to do is just remove the transistor entirely and just wire it up from the drain to the source with a little piece of wire or maybe just a big blob of solder uh, on the PCB. But if you insert, say, a blue crystal, right, then the microcontroller is going to be sending a signal to the blue transistor to turn on. So we need to make sure that never gets, the blue channel never gets turned on. And the way to do that is just to remove the transistor for the blue, and the, in this case, the green and, and the red. We're going to remove all three transistors. So I am going to uh, purposely use the soldering iron tip I have with the, the, the largest tip, the largest chisel tip here, because this is these are tiny little things, and this is a giant uh, soldering iron tip. It's going to make life difficult. You really want as fine a soldering iron tip as you can get, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use, I'm going to make things more difficult for myself. So I'm just waiting for that to come up to temperature. And then once all of these transistors are removed, we'll figure out how to wire red directly to ground. Um, so I'm gonna grab my solder here. I've got very thin solder here. The size of the solder really doesn't matter here. My plan here is just, I'm gonna flood the whole area with solder with just a, an absolute massive amount of solder. I do not care where the solder goes at this point or what kind of bridges it makes. The more the merrier because I'm just gonna sort of come at the transistor from above and try to heat all three uh, pins at the same time. Come on, get off. And there we go. There's one of the transistors. I'm just heating up all three pins at the same time using a bunch of excess solder to the point that I've got a mountain of the stuff. And actually, I'm going to remove it from this plastic housing here just, just to protect the plastic housing from uh, melting if I accidentally hit it. I'm going to put this underneath it. This is just a, a, a ceramic tile. Uh, you don't necessarily need this. I'm just using it because it's going to make my life a little easier. 
keep the PCB flat because there are uh, capacitors underneath it that I don't want to uh, break or bend or anything. So again, I'm just flooding with as much solder as I can here. I don't really care. There we go. There's the second transistor off. Let's go for the third transistor. Again, I've got a massive blob of solder here on my iron. And all I'm trying to do here is to get every pin of this transistor uh, hot enough that the solder is molten at the same time. There we go. There's the third transistor. Wasn't very precise, wasn't trying to be very precise. All I care about is that I have all of these uh, pads now. Free of any excess solder, I'm just going to make sure that there's no bridges between them. I have a big blob of solder here going from the uh, diode down to the, uh, the drain on the red transistor. That's fine because there's a wire there, that a trace on the PCB that connects it there. Now I need to connect it to ground somehow though. And where's or the source? And I want to connect that pin and that pin together somehow. So either use a piece of wire or try a big blob of solder. Will a blob of solder work here? I don't know. Let's find out. If a solder blob doesn't work, no big deal. Yeah, I suspect a blob of solder is not going to work. So now I need a piece of wire then. This is, I don't know, 22 gauge solid core wire. And I need to strip it. So I'll just use my wire cutter, my wire stripper here. And uh, really, I could just strip a length of copper, a length of wire here. See, there's, oh, there we go. And that length of wire that I've stripped is actually long enough to make the connection I need to make here. So if I bend it like so, then I can come in here and sort of wire that, just dump a bunch of solder and create the connection. You could do the same if you're doing the blue or the red transistor, or a green transistor like that. But for this case, I'm doing the red transistor. And uh, you could, point of note here, actually get rid of this diode as well. That diode, is just there to make the red a little less bright. It's not needed. Um, but then you have to also remove it and you can remove it the same way I removed um, this earlier. But uh, with, you know, just put a bunch of solder on either end and just go back and forth until it comes off. But in this case, you don't really need to do that. Um, so now I'm just gonna mash down from above with my iron and what happens and this is where actually having a big iron tip really helps the heat's going into the copper wire the copper wire then makes the connection across both those pads give it a second to cool down and then just you know lop the wire off so now all the red LEDs are connected directly to ground. So the only thing that's going to control the red LEDs turning on and off are the uh, transistors that control the different banks, their segments of LEDs. Uh, green and blue will never turn on because green and blue, the transistors are gone. So this will always be a red lightsaber now. So now it's just a matter of reassembling the board, or the blade I should say, and testing it out. So let's do that real quick. And yeah, there's a bunch of flux there uh, on the board and that is okay. You can leave that there. You don't have to clean it up. If you want to clean it up, you can clean it up with isopropyl alcohol. But again, it is not necessary to clean it up. When you're putting it back, make sure the wires are in the middle and not over the screw holes. Otherwise, you will be screwing through a wire and things will be bad. It goes in like that. And I'm just, I'm just trying to turn the connector here, putting my finger in the slot. 
So that way I know it's locked in place and it's not in the wrong location. Put the three screws back in, grab your nearest lightsaber blade, or hilt I should say. Here it is. It's got a white crystal in it. Yes, it looks red, but I've actually programmed it white. You can see it blinking white there. And now, for the test. Now I have a red lightsaber, and it will always be a red lightsaber blade. And that is how you can turn any blade into any single color. Now, I want to point out, this, this trick only works if you want one single color active. The reason being that, because those LEDs are now going to always be on, they're going to draw a lot of current. And if all three LEDs, which would make the blade white, for example, were all on and never, never pulsed, they're going to draw at least a couple of amps of current. And that's going to drain your batteries real quickly. And uh, the transistors are set up that they could handle that much current. But, or the, yeah, the transistors should handle that much current, but mm, I wouldn't do it. I'd just stick with this, use this trick on a, on a, a single color only. And uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing now, I am taking this apart because I'm going to go and reverse this mod to put this blade back to the way it was. But for you, you don't have to worry about doing that because you now have the red or blue or green lightsaber that you always wanted.